stack higher in that the Desivere has been shown to have activity against the SAR. So for habit number four, we're gonna look at one where most pro goalies, their grade in this habit looks a lot like my grade from first year matrix algebra, which would be a big fat F. <laughs> uh, and it is that they don't build strength in the end range. They don't get in the outer, outer range of their range of motion. They don't build strength there. If you don't have strength, if you can't control the range of motion, then you can't use that range of motion. I'll give you some examples, exactly how we go through it. So let's get into it. I have no idea what's going on with that ice over there. Like, did they take all the ice out of the rink? Maybe, so they could turn the rink off? I don't know. Uh, but anyways, there's my home rink. Kind of sad. Okay, so here's the sciency bit. And if you don't want the sciency bit, then just watch the Instagram TV version. The Instagram TV version, like I said, it's gonna be the shorter version. Uh, just kind of get right to the exercises. Uh, but here on YouTube, I think you're a little more refined audience. So uh, we're gonna hit you with the science of it. Basically, a lot of our mobility limitations come from our nervous system. So it's not that our muscles aren't long enough or just all of a sudden too tight like because they're too short our body's a little smarter than that right even if you think of it it doesn't make sense that it's just like our our body adapts to the demands we put on it so why would our body adapt to make a muscle that we need to be longer why would our body adapt to make it shorter you know just for no reason so there's got to be a reason either that muscle is contracting to guard to protect an unstable uh, segment uh, or there's something else going on or it's being used to do a job that isn't its job so it's getting overworked but what the point is that we can't just stretch it and make that better if this muscle is tight because it's guarding if this muscle if I can't get my full range because it's protecting me my brain doesn't know like if I'm if I'm in my butterfly and I go to kick out my leg or try to do a split save my body knows that I hey uh, from experience you've actually never been in that position before and you've never actually produced high amounts of force at a high speed from that position before it knows that so it's gonna actually contract to protect us hopefully that works and maybe they, they score the goal but at least you don't end up tearing your groin sometimes it just isn't fast enough and we're gonna end up tearing our groin or injuring ourselves. So, if you've ever done, you know, been pretty consistent with your stretching, but found like, man, I'm not, I'm not getting any better really on the ice, or, uh, or I can, you know, almost do the splits at home when I'm stretching, but then when I'm on the ice, I can't at all. This is part of the reason. So, what we need to do is get you in those outer ranges. And when I work with pro goalies or elite goalies at different camps, what I find is that. And, and it's not sort of their fault, it's that you don't even have an awareness of what your hip range of motion is. If I ask them to make as big a circle as possible, I'm gonna have to get off Chester to show you this. I got a feeling Chester and I might be spending a lot of time together in the next few weeks. So when I ask you to make as big a circle as you can at your hip joint, uh, a lot like we did on Monday, Tuesday, Whatever, habit number one. If you haven't seen habit number one yet, go back to it because it sort of lays a little bit of the foundation of this. But when I ask goalies to make as big a circle as they can at their hip, you know, they kind of come up as high as here, like almost as high as their hip joint. Uh, and they usually don't come in together. There's typically no real extension. You know, it, it's there. They don't even have programmed in their brain like, Oh yeah, actually my hip goes all the way, you know, I have all this extra range. So the first thing we have to do is explore that range, find that range, teach you where that range is. Then the next thing we have to do is get busy building strength there and not just like 
oh uh, yeah, strength, but like serious strength so that you can control that range of motion. You can make those, if you have to, make those reaching saves, but then you have the strength and control to come back and get compact and ready to move or explode and make the next save. So that's our mission. And this kind of training requires a ton of discipline. So as you go through these, some of you are gonna go through it and you're gonna be like, oh yeah, that wasn't very hard. Like I, I kind of do stuff like that. Like I do the couch stretch or whatever then you're, you're simply not doing it right. And I'm sorry to be blunt, but you aren't doing it right. You can produce maximum force production just using your brain, iso, it's called an isometric action. So I can produce max force in my biceps just by squeezing my biceps. The same as if I had, you know, a 50 pound dumbbell in my hand that I'm trying to lift, I can produce the same amount of force. So you'll say, well, why, why do we even use weights then? Well, we use weights for two reasons. Number one, we use weights because we don't have to be as mentally disciplined because we have to produce enough force to lift that weight. The other thing about isometrics is it's um, specific to the angle of training, plus or minus five degrees. So if I wanted to get some nice big pipes for the beach season, sun's out, guns out, you know how it is, um, I would have to do an isometric kind of in this range, this range, this range, this range, you know, and that would actually take a lot longer than just grabbing my dumbbells and, and crushing out some like 21s or whatever. Uh, so, so that's part of the reason. But again, for a goalie, well, we work strength in those other ranges. What we really need is that outer range, plus or minus five degrees. That sounds pretty good to me. That sounds like exactly what I need. So you have to be very mentally disciplined. You have to consciously create tension. You're gonna have to learn to fire muscles. Some of these exercises, you're gonna be like, man, I, I don't, I'm trying my hardest, but I don't feel like I'm producing any strength or power there. Yeah, because you're weak and because you have no control, but this is a way that you can improve it. So let's, uh, let's go back and join the people on Instagram TV and um, let's just go through these exercises. I'll, I'll give you just a few that you can try out. Here we go. So this is called a passive range hold. So you can hold on to something for balance. With your free hand, you're gonna pull your knee up as high as you can get it. You're gonna stay straight in this leg, tall in your torso, pull that knee as high as you can get it. Then turn on these muscles in the front of your hip, your hip flexors, and then you're gonna hold it. But as if, you know, as if someone's pushing down on that, you're holding up as high and as hard as you can. Keep holding, pulling, pulling. You're gonna do that for 15 seconds. Then you're gonna come down, then you're gonna come out as far as you can to the side and as high as you can. Using your hand to pull it up there. Now let go and keep it there. Staying tall, a radiating force through your whole body about 30% for 15 seconds and then down. Then, whew. then the next one will be sort of halfway in between. So out here, as high as I can, holding it there lifting as hard as I can, a radiating force through my whole body. Now, if you bring your knee up and then contract, and when you let go, your knee goes pop back down there, it tells me that you don't have good control with your iliopsoas, that you overuse your rectus femoris, which is a quadricep muscle that crosses the hip, but it kind of only lifts the knee to about thigh parallel. You need to be using your iliopsoas to get that knee as high as your belly button. You need to be using your iliopsoas to, to recover your skate underneath you so you can push from your butterfly. So really important muscle group. And this is a way that we can start to activate that muscle group and get it working. We did your hip cars in video one. We did shoulder cars in video one. Cars are controlled articular rotation. So check out video one or habit number one uh, to pick those up. Um, what I want to show you now are knee cars. A bunch of you ask like when we're in the RVH, I know this is an RVH position, but when we're in the RVH, you're asking how do I get more rotation at my knee? How do I get my tibia basically to externally rotate relative to my knee? Well, it isn't really something that 
like we have a lot of range of motion. We don't have a lot of degrees of freedom of, of femur on tibia rotation or tibia on femur rotation. But we should have some, and some of you will be really shocked that you actually have none. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of slide our arm underneath our thigh like that. Now I've picked up my foot. I'm going to turn my foot in as far as I can, but I'm really looking at sort of this front edge of my tibia because I'm trying to do tibial rotation, not just rotation of my foot. So I want to get tibial rotation. There's not going to be a lot. Then I'm going to slowly straighten my knee as far as I can get it. You won't get it perfectly straight if you're in rotation. Then I'm going to rotate my tibia outward. And I even put my finger on my tibia to feel, is it rotating outward? Then I'm going to come back down into flexion. I'll rotate, so that tibial internal rotation as far as I can get. I'll straighten as far as I can go. I'll rotate, and I'm actively really still continuing to try to rotate, rotate, rotate. So I'm not just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really feel anything. You know, it's conscious. Now I'm going to go the other way. So I'm going into tibial external rotation straightening out but I'm still trying to externally rotate that tibia keeping my knee stationary or my knee pointing straight up and then in actively internally rotating actively externally rotating actively internally rotating for the next one we're gonna do some lift-offs. Um, so this is gonna be a hip internal rotation lift-off, which again, hip internal rotation is our butterfly. When we are in our butterfly and we push across the crease, and you know we wanna keep that lead pad flared, but sometimes it, it bends underneath us. It, it sort of folds in behind us. That's because we have no control in that end range of motion. Um, so we're gonna get in our 90-90 position. So 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here and 90 degrees here. And then we're gonna stay tall in our torso and as upright as possible. And we're gonna lift this foot off the ground. So from here, I can't lift it at all. I don't have any uh, control in that range. I don't have enough range. So I have to come forward just a little bit, keeping my neutral back position, staying tall. Now I can just lift it off. And I'm lifting it off as if I have a 45 pound plate on my foot. I'm generating that much tension. Sometimes I feel like my hip is gonna cramp. Sometimes I feel here like I'm gonna get a cramp in my back. If it's easy for you, you're not doing it right. Uh, so again, it's about being disciplined with your mind, finding that mind muscle connection. And some of you just don't have that yet. You need to practice but being very disciplined with it. So you'll do three times of about a 15 second hold, build up to a 15 second hold. You might start with three times five. If you get pain or pinching in your hip, I don't mean a muscle cramp or that it feels hard, but pain or pinching in your hip, just leave this one out. There's about a million of these that we can do. How about I give you one more uh, and then we'll wrap it up for today. So from this 90-90 position, we're going to do a hip opener. So. I'm in my 90-90. I'm trying to keep this knee down as close to the ground as I can. But this knee is gonna start to open up. You wanna be careful what shorts you're wearing if you do this in the gym. <laughs> so I'm still trying to keep this down, I'm trying to open this up, I'm trying to stay tall in my torso. Now this knee is gonna come start coming along, but I'm not taking off the tension. Now I'm driving this knee down towards the ground, trying to keep this knee open. Like I'm in thick, thick cement, driving this knee down. And now I've switched positions. So I'm generating that tension. I'm building strength in my whole rotator cuff of my hip as I sometimes call it. So those are a few of the ways we can build strength in our end range. If you want a full blueprint, because I know some of you are stuck at home for the next few weeks, 
I've got a six week blueprint that's called strategic mobility for goalies. Um, I'm trying to give away tons of free content during this time because I know it's a it's an uncertain time for a bunch of us. But if you want that like exact blueprint, like okay, but like when should I do it? How many should I do it? What, you know, what goes first and then second? How does it all fit together in terms of program design? Then check out that strategic mobility for goalies. It's just strategicmobilityforgoalies.com. And again, because I know it's sort of an uncertain time, I was actually going to run a promotion on it starting on Thursday and through Sunday, but I don't really, it was going to be 25% off, but I don't really feel that's appropriate. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a coupon that gives you 40% off um, and I'll just kind of leave it going for the foreseeable future so that if you're really, yeah, if you're motivated, you're disciplined, you share my view that really this is going to be, this could be a blessing in disguise if I take my time to work um, deliberately on the right things, consistently on the right things, I have no excuses or a lot of you have no excuses, then I want to make it as easy as possible for you. So um, I'll post the 40% off coupon code somewhere. I have to figure out how to make one, but I'm sure I can. <laughs> um, and then, you know, yeah, again, just for the foreseeable future, um, I'll put that up there for you. But otherwise, I will be back tomorrow with habit number five. And uh, tomorrow's secret is one that a few of the very, very top goalies get. They're the ones that almost look like they defy gravity. Uh, it's going to be helpful if you're one of those goalies. It needs to work on sort of leading with your head and your hands, but you want to have your hips sort of snapping around with you. That's going to help you out. So I'm going to get busy putting that together for you. I will have it ready for you. I promise I'll have it ready for you by tomorrow. Uh, until then, I will catch you next time. Do what you can do. Get in some deliberate practice. Look at this as a blessing in disguise. Decide that no matter what happens, you are an expert in making the best of a bad situation, so you're gonna do just fine. So it always feels better when you're at the playground. Although it's the winds really come up, it kind of felt like the playground at the start of Harry Potter. Uh, maybe movie number five, you know, when they're in the playground, it's kind of creepy weird. But <laughs> anyway, I feel better. You know what make me feel a lot better? If you like this video, if you subscribed, if you subscribe, then hit the bell. Then you find out about these videos as soon as they're posted. And I'm going to be posting every day for the next little while. Usually I post once a week, but we're going to want to keep, keep you active, keep you going so that once the ice does open, you're, you're flying out there. You're feeling better than you did even before. So thanks for tuning in and I will catch you tomorrow with habit number five. Cheers.